Welcome to Charge Heads, my name's Tim, and you're here because you want to know why your electric car is absolutely plummeting in value. Believe me, you're not the only one. As you may remember, at the start of this year, and a little bit before, electric prices were doing nothing but inflating. Tesla put their prices up 3,000 on a new car, and then the next week they put up another 3,000. And funnily enough, that's when I bought a used car, because I knew that the used prices were going to start really rocketing. I made the right decision there and then, or did I? So I'll come to that later. Inflated prices on all cars, not just electric cars, but more so on electric cars. So why was that? That was because of materials for the battery and for the car itself, the inflation. And obviously, because the materials are hard to get hold of, they become more expensive. Uh, desirability, electric cars have been so desirable because of the massive savings that they give you uh, to run every day, not just uh, in terms of running them, but also in terms of servicing costs and tax. Why are electric prices now dropping like an absolute stone? One of the reasons is because of the price of electricity, which is measured in kilowatt hours. The reason electricity has gone up uh, one of the reasons is gas price has gone up massively because of the Ukraine war, uh, which because gas and electric are both measured in kilowatt hour, they both go up together because they've always been interlinked in that way, unfortunately. And I'm sure all the EV drivers will know that as long as you're charging at home and your rate isn't too extortionate, bear in mind there's loads of different rates. Some people are paying as little as nothing if they've got solar, more so in the summer, of course, um, 8p per kilowatt hour, uh, if they're on an octopus go or slightly more and normally runs between one o'clock and four o'clock to take advantage of the cheaper electric when no one's using it. Uh, but some people I have heard are paying up to public charger costs, which if you're paying the sort of 70 to 79 plus P per kilowatt hour, um, then a petrol and diesel car, as long as it's an efficient petrol and diesel car, there's not a massive amount of difference between the uh, cost per mile. However, there is still the benefit of the servicing costs, tax, and of course, the environmental cost. Yes, they are better for the environment. Doesn't matter what any of the naysayers or Dave says down the pub. Just look at the facts, for goodness sake. You're the only one who's finished, pollution. The other reason why um, electric cars are dropping in value is because of availability. So used car market, there, there wasn't many used cars uh, electric ones on the market, new cars you couldn't get for love the money. I mean, certain brands like your Audi's, VW, Skoda's, which I work with quite a lot, there was long lead times. You're talking at least a year, and it was very similar on a lot of legacy manufacturers. Tesla have been a lot better, mainly because they don't have as many issues with the um, supply chain, which is a massive uh, factor with regards to how quickly they're building these cars and one of the reasons why they were inflated in the first place. Although they've had their issues in, you know, especially with cars coming from China, with uh, China clamping down on COVID quite, quite a bit, uh, which obviously reduces uh, factory time straight away. Um, so availability. So a lot more used cars this month have been hitting the used car market, because a load of two year and three year leases have been ending. So there's a hell of a lot of electric cars um, hitting the used car market, coming off leased. And again, you know, supply and demand, when there's a lot of supply, you know, the demand is then taken care of and then prices start to reduce. And that's why the price are inflated in the first place, because supply and demand, availability has started bringing prices down. So what else has been hitting the market which has reduced used car prices? This, this might be a little bit of a curveball for, for people, but I think that a massive factor has been the MG4 car that's just come out, which is MG, it's a legacy brand from the UK, which shut down unfortunately, and then the Chinese got hold of it. And um, a Chinese manufacturer, I can't remember their name, uh, remind me in the comments or I'll write it underneath. Um, they started putting into UK some great value electric cars. So you can now get an MG4 long range, which is 28 and a half thousand pounds, does about 225 mile range for, for that money, 28 and a half thousand pounds. And the quality is nearly as good, probably a couple of thousand pounds short value wise in terms of uh, materials and quality to the VW ID3, which is a similar size car, practicality range. But an ID3 is like 36, 37,000 pounds. So it's like a nearly a 10,000 pound difference there, but there's not a 10,000 pound difference in 
uh, value in terms of the quality of the car. So when you can get a 225 mile range, realistic range that is, that's used for EV database. I always go on there if you want realistic range, not this WLTP, yes, that number, range. Um, if someone wants an affordable EV, they're not looking at a used one. Do you know what? I'm gonna go and buy an MG, MG4, great value car for that money. So that's another reason why prices are coming down because electric cars, new ones are becoming more affordable. So fuel prices. Prices here are ticking up and so is the pain. Another day, another petrol price record. Now that's been a massive factor on how desirable electric cars are. You couldn't get fuel. Fuel, diesel went up to two pound, petrol went up to one pound 90. Why would you want a ICE, internal combustion engine, car? Because they're smelly, they're noisy, they're bad for the environment, you can't get the fuel and they're really expensive to run. I need to go and get an electric car. That was another thing that inflated the prices and made the supply and demand model so much uh, more under pressure. But guess what? Petrol and diesel, you know, you can get it a lot more easily now and the prices have started to fall. Diesel is still pretty high. I mean, you're talking sort of between £1.80 and £1.90, but petrol has come down that much more. I think it's down to sort of 160 to 170. Um, so that's another factor. People are thinking, oh, well, it's fine now. So the demand has slowed down for the for the uh, electric cars for that reason, which is a, a big shame, unfortunately. I think we need to talk about infrastructure. Now, when I say infrastructure, I don't really mean for Teslas, do I? I've been very, very fortunate enough to be able to afford a Tesla, and I've been very fortunate enough to go to a Tesla charger and never have a queue. But I mean, I'm sure people who have got an electric car that don't have a Tesla have had issues at EV uh, DC chargers, even the AC chargers, so direct charge, the faster chargers, and the AC altern alternating current, which are the slower ones, seven kilowatt hour, etc. I've tried to use a non Tesla charger when I've been in the Tesla before and other brands as well. And I'll tell you what, it's still a nightmare in this country. It's getting better. I mean, even down the road, my shell garage, they're putting in a couple of DC fast chargers, which is better for my area because there's hardly any around. Um, but it's still a massive struggle for the infrastructure. And if people have, you know, had an electric car, you know, they're gonna tell their friends, they're gonna tell other people, they are gonna have a rant and a rave. The infrastructure is not there, unless you've got a Tesla, from what I found. But please comment if you've got a Tesla and you've had to wait at an EV charging station. I'll be really interested to see if you have been waiting at any point in time. I was gonna mention it at some point, wasn't I? The financial crisis. Yes, we've had inflation, which has increased the price of materials, etc. But it's increased the price of everything. Food, um, clothes, presents for Christmas, everything has gone up massively. And, you know, we're all struggling, you know, we're all struggling. Interest rates as well going up. Well, that's going to hit a lot of people so hard on their mortgages. People are thinking, well, do you know what? I need to be selling the expensive cars, whether it's electric car or a petrol diesel, that I need to be saving some money. There's some hard decisions being made and you know, electric cars are right at the back of the queue with regards to being important for people to buy, whether it's environmentally or saving money or, you know, do you know what, I'll buy an electric car and hopefully I'll make the savings on the, you know, the servicing and the tax and the running costs. It's just not there at the moment for people because everybody's struggling. So I suppose you want some evidence of uh, used car pricing absolutely plummeting. Well, I've got it for you and I've got it in spades. So I'm gonna get on the uh, laptop now and show you a few examples. So example number one, I did a spreadsheet five months ago with a load of electric cars on, most of them in fact, giving all sorts of detail, whether it's um, 0 to 60 range, etc., etc. Loads of stuff on here. And one of the things that I did was I looked at Auto Trader, which is the main used car buying, uh, selling site uh, with regards to advertising cars, many dealers. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, and I took the three cheapest of every model, uh, divided it by three, um, and got a price. So, like the cheapest average of three. So I'm gonna give you a couple here. So we've got right at the top here, Audi Q4 35, which is the smaller battery, and 40, which is the bigger battery. There we go, got the range here, 175 versus 250, realistic range. Um, loads of other information there, but the main one here, if you look on the right. So I took this information on the 29th of June this year, and then I repeated it literally a couple of days ago on the 27th. So here we go. 
and we've got the loss at the back here. £5,000 loss, Q435. £8,160 loss on a Q440. Some serious losers going on here and only literally a couple of winners. Um, the e-trons losing between four and six thousand pounds. Big one here. Mustang, Mackey, short range, all wheel drive, eight thousand nine hundred pounds. Um, Fiat five hundred's done all right. That's apparently a very underrated car according to Fully Charged. So I'm gonna have to drive one of those. Not having to drive, hadn't driven one of those yet. Hyundai Kona, five thousand pounds. Jaguar I Pace, four thousand pounds. And I did think if you don't buy a Tesla, the Jaguar I Pace if you want an SUV and four wheel drive, is actually, was actually a really good value car. So it's probably even more good value if someone wants a four wheel drive electric car um, as efficient as possible, because the Audi e-tron wasn't as efficient, unfortunately. Um, the Mercedes took a massive, massive hit. Where is it? Uh, Mercedes EQA 5100, that's a big one. And then here we go down the bottom. So the Teslas, Teslas haven't done well. Now, you could argue that there are a lot more Teslas on the market, and I'm sure prices are going to get a lot lower. But let's take here, short range, Tesla Model 3, seven grand. The one that I own, Model uh, 3 long range, 5,000. Saying the average lowest price is 36,000. Now, I actually bought mine at 36,000 with 57,000 miles on. Um, and I probably could have sold that two, three months ago for 40,000. I did try and sell it. Uh, actually, because uh, I thought, you know what, I know what's happening with the market. I'll try and sell it early and then I'll buy another, maybe a performance one. There, there was a reason for buying a, wanting to buy a performance. I drove a one, put it in track mode, loved it, um, and buy another one back in March. But there was a lot of things going on. I didn't even end up selling it. I got offered 35 for it, but I don't think I could get even 32 for it now, a month later, because they're literally dropping like a stone. But they would be dropping a lot more if they weren't a good car because there's a hell of a lot of Teslas hitting the market. What can we do? We've got electric cars and they're dropping like a stone. Now, if you've got a lease, which will be most people, um, it won't matter because you're paying your monthly amount and you know, you're know you doing literally, you're paying your monthly amount, you know what you're paying, you just give it back. I paid for mine outright, so I'm taking a massive hit, but that's fine. I'm looking to keep that car and run it into the ground. I want that car to go well over 100,000 miles. I want to uh, smash some myths about electric cars not being able to go over 100,000 miles and only having a 50 mile range battery. What a load of bollocks. Or will it not be? You'll have to keep watching the channel, see what my Tesla Model 3 or hashtag Rusty Tesla uh, performs like once it goes over 100,000. And the warranty runs out on the battery and motor. And uh, any fixes that need doing and where to go. I did one about MOT, so where do you get your electric car MOT? Check that other uh, video out. I also have a uh, very special build, which is electrifying TVR, So, which is bonkers. It's, like a, it's got a used Tesla motor in it. It's got used batteries from an MG ZS SUV. Um, it's going to have fast charging. It's going to have about 150 mile range. It's going to be very exciting. And I'm hoping to uh, have that up against my petrol Griffith and decide which one I want to keep. I've got a feeling it's going to be the electric one, knowing what's going to be happening in the future. So keep an eye on all the other videos on the channel. There's loads out there. There's about 70 videos. So if you're interested in electric cars, take a look. If you are interested in uh, getting a copy of this spreadsheet, then put a comment in or message me on the socials because I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll send you the spreadsheet um, because it's really, really useful. There's loads of stuff on here. Um, if you wanna have a look, for example, I've got new on here as well. So if you wanted, for example, to have a look at the best range electric car uh, that is under 50,000, first one, Fisker Ocean Ultra. Well, forget that one because it's not going to be here for a while. Um, I worked out that the best one was actually the Cupra Born 77 kilowatt hour, which is the big battery one, same as a VW ID3 Tour, uh, which you probably get, I think I saw one the other day, used for about 38,000. They do a realistic range of 280 miles, which is pretty much Tesla Model 3 long range uh, territory, although it's still real drive, not four wheel drive. 
and it doesn't have all the benefits of the Tesla infrastructure and all the rest of it, but maybe you don't need the charging infrastructure with that kind of range. Um, there's loads of things you can just play around with, you know, if you want the best efficiency, um, you know, make this, okay, so best efficiency model three short range, then the Ionic 6, six that looks like a sick, it is sick, it looks sick. Then you've got the model three long range there. So yeah, if you want this spreadsheet, happy to send it over um, and please like and subscribe to the channel, share what you've heard today. I hope that has been useful. I'm sorry to anyone that's got an electric car, which is, you know, financially paining them, which it is for me as well, but it is the greater good at the end of the day. Better air, because the amount of air pollution that is not talked about in this country and many others with regards to petrol and diesel cars is horrific. And to make sure that we are on the road to an electric future um, to reduce the climate impact we're having. Um, thanks for watching. My name is Tim. See you soon.